All right, in this video, we're going to talk about section 11.4. This is in chapter 11. This deals with volume and surface area. So here we're going to be looking at volumes of uh, three-dimensional figures. And also, we're going to be finding surface area of three-dimensional figures. Okay, we're going to talk about first uh, similarity and difference between volume and capacity. Okay. So now the volume is the amount of space that a three-dimensional object occupies. So it's going to be that space. So for a cylinder, for a cone, we look at the space. That's the volume, how much uh, water that the uh, three-dimensional figure can contain. And the capacity of a container tells you the amount of material that a container holds. Okay. Okay, first of all, we're going to talk about cubic units of volume because volume, when we're dealing with volume, we're going to be dealing with the cubic units. Area deals with square units. Okay. And you might have learned that in a previous uh, course. But here, square units for area, cubic units will be for volume. The cubic centimeter and cubic inch are units of volume. A cubic centimeter, which is shortened as uh, centimeters cubed, is the space occupied by a cube with a length of one centimeter, a width of one centimeter, and a, and a height of one centimeter. And cubic inch, which is inches cubed, that's going to be the space occupied by a cube with a length of one inch width of one inch and height of one inch. Okay, so a cube with side length one unit called a unit cube is said to have one cubic unit of volume and can be used to measure volume. So let's take a look at this particular problem number one on page 689 in the textbook. It says that each cube represents one cubic centimeter. Determine the volume of each solid. The cubes are placed on a flat surface. So some of the, some of the cubes are hidden. Okay, so look at part A. That's this first one right here. We're just simply going to count up how many cubes there are. And there are some that are hidden. I can tell you that. So if you see here, there's one, two, three, four, five six and seven but for these two to be standing there is a cube right behind the second one right here so that's a total of eight so here this represents eight cubic centimeters eight cubic centimeters and now part b this right here. We see one, two, three. There's one back here. That's four. And these two, five and six. The other one is right behind, right underneath these two right here. So that's a total of seven cubic centimeters. And then part C is this one. We see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's one back there that's nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now there's one along this one. There's another one back there that's nine. Nine, ten. And then there's one that's holding these two up. That's eleven. Okay, so here that's 11 cubic uh, centimeters. I know that might be hard to see, but you know, see these five right here, there's one in front, but there is another one behind it. That's going to be the six and the seven. This is eight. That's nine. That's 10. And there's another one that's holding these two up. That's 11. Okay, 11 cubic centimeters. Okay, next we'll talk about cubic units of volume. 
More generally, the symbol unit cube is a measurement of volume represented by the space occupied by a cube with dimensions of length equal to one unit, width equal to one unit, and height equal to one unit. So here, students should know that a solid figure, which can be packed without gaps or overlaps using n unit cubes, is said to have a volume of n cubic units. Okay. All right, take a look at example 44. It says here, how many cubic centimeters equal one cubic unit? Now, here we have to use this equation, and you might have learned this from another course. One inch is equal to 2.54 centimeters, and treat centimeters as a variable. Similar to the variable a in the equation, 2a raised to the third would be equal to 8a to the third. You have to multiply, I mean, raise each, um, everything in the parentheses has to be raised to the third power. So the 2 is to the third power, which is 8 and a to the third will be a to the third, even though centimeters is a label. So here, one cubic inch is this. You have one cubic inch, and that's going to be multiplied by this equivalent of one inch equaling to 2.54 centimeters. What you're converting from goes in the numerator, which you're converting to goes in the, I mean, in the denominator is what you're converting from. What's in the numerator is what you're converting to. So that 2.54 centimeters would be in the numerator, one inch would be in the denominator. And we're dealing with a cubic inch, so we're going to take that ratio and cube it. So here, bring down one cubic inch. The 2.54 will be to the third. The centimeters will be cubed. One will be cubed. Inches will be cubed as well. And then next, you see the inches, the cubic inches divide out. Okay, so now 2.54 cubed would be approximately 16.4. So here in this case, one cubic inch is going to be 16.4 cubic centimeters. Okay. Now, this next slide deals with the cubic units of volume. This is table 11.10, and it lists some of the cubic common cubic units of volume, like a cubic inch, which is going to be inches cubed as a symbol. In this case, this could be something like the cost to mail a box, and it depends upon size measured in cubic inches, or cubic feet, which is going to be feet cubed. That'd be the volume of air per hour that a fan moves is typically reported in cubic feet. And then cubic yards or yards cubed, that's going to be the soil. That could be soil for landscaping. And that's typically sold in bags, holding two to three cubic yards. And then cubic mile or mile to the third or mile cubed. In that case, scientists report the volume of ice that melts at the North, at the North Pole using cubic miles. Okay, those are just how those uh, cubic units of volume can be used contextually. And here's other cubic units of volume. When you're dealing with the metric system, cubic millimeters or millimeters cubed, in that case, Researchers often measure the number of T cells per cubic millimeters of blood to monitor the effect of a drug for a treatment of a disease. And then the other one, cubic centimeters or centimeters cubed. In that case, the size of an engine measure, measured in units of cubic centimeters is the volume of air the engine displaces with one cycle of the cylinders. And then cubic meters or meters cubed. Here, governments, governments typically estimate natural gas deposits using cubic meters. And also cubic kilometers or kilometers cubed. That's where scientists report the volume of large bodies of water, such as the Great Lakes, using cubic uh, kilometers. So again, 
those are just some contextual ways that cubic, un cubic units of volume can be used. Okay, take a look at this example number 46. Here, scientists estimate that part of a Greenland ice sheet loses approximately, approximately 108 kilo, cubic kilometers of ice per year. Estimate this measurement in cubic miles per month. Okay. Here's where they start with 100 cubic uh, kilometers per year. Now, per month, we know that there are 12 months in a year. So, the one year is what we're converting from. Since it's in the denominator, that one year will have to go in the numerator. And then the 12 months, which is what one year is equivalent to, will go in the denominator. That way, these years will divide out. Okay, now let's get to uh, cubic miles here from kilometers. There is a known fact that one kilometer is equal to 1,000 meters. So here, we're going to take the one kilometer. That's going to go in the denominator because we're converting from kilometers. And that's equivalent to 1,000 meters. That goes in the numerator. And since we're dealing with cubic kilometers here, we need to take this ratio and cubit. And now we got to get to meters all the way to uh, cubic miles. Well, I know something here. Let's go from meters to centimeters. One meter is equivalent to 100 centimeters. So that one meter will be in the denominator and the one we're converting to 100 centimeters that would go in the numerator. And we're dealing with cubic units, so that has to be cubed as well. But we do know something about, uh, we do know the fact that one inch is 2.54 centimeters, like we talked about in the, other, in the other example. So here, let's put the one inch on top and the 2.54 centimeters in the bottom and cube that. And then we know that 12 inches make up a foot. So we have this ratio. 12 inches will be on the denominator. One foot will be in the numerator. We're going to cube that as well because we want cubic miles. And then finally, there's 5,280 feet in one mile. So the 5,280 feet goes on the denominator. And then one mile will be the <coughs> in the numerator. And then we're going to cube that. Excuse, excuse me. So here we're going to end up with this, all this multiplication here to get from kilometers all the way to miles. So here on the next slide, you're going to see that those units divide out the cubic kilometers, divide out the cubic meters, divide out the years, divide out inches, divide out centimeters, divide out inches, cube, divide out and cubic feet divide out. So we have this particular ratio of 108 times 1,000 cubed times 100 cubed divided by 12 times 2.54 cubed times 12 cubed times 5,280 cubed. And you'll have cubic miles per month. Multiply, multiply this out, multiply that out, and divide, you'll get approximately 2.2 cubic miles per month. So the ice sheet loses approximately 2.2 cubic miles per month. Okay. Take a look at problem number 22 on page uh, 691. So here we're going to look at a few of these here. All right, in this case here, it says here, we want to convert the following measurements. We're going to start with 567 cubic inches is equal to how many cubic feet? Okay. So I might need to do this on the side here. 567 
cubic inches. And here we're going to put this over 1. Now I want to know how many cubic feet is that. Well, let's look at some of the basics here that you should have learned in another course about inches to feet. One foot is 12 inches. One foot is 12 inches. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm converting to feet so that one foot goes in the numerator. And the 12 inches is what I'm converting from. Inches has to go in the denominator. So 12 goes in the denominator and the one will be in the numerator. So we got this. Now, I want cubic uh, feet. So this ratio of one foot to 12 inches will have to be cubed. So that means I'm going to have... 567 cubic inches over 1 times 1 cube times the cubic foot over, and that 12 has to be cubed as well. And that's going to be in cubic inches as well. You're going to see here these cubic inches divide out. And Using a calculator, I'm going to take 567. Let me clear this out and this out. 567 times 1, and that's going to be cubed. And then that's going to be divided by 12. And that's going to be raised to the third. and then hit enter. And that will be the decimal equivalent to that point. 328.125. And this is in cubic feet. Okay. So 567 cubic inches would be equivalent to 0.328125 cubic feet. All right, now part B is 789 cubic inches is equal to how many cubic yards? Okay. So in this case here, I'm going to do part B down here. We got 789 cubic inches. And I'm going to put that over 1. Now, let's think about this one. We know that 12 inches is equivalent to one foot. So let's start with that. The one foot has to go in the numerator, and the 12 inches has to go in the denominator. And that's going to be cubed, since we're dealing with cubic units here. I also know this. Since I want to get to yards, three feet make up a yard. Okay. Three feet make up a yard. So here, for this to divide out, the three feet will have to go in the denominator. And the one yard goes in the numerator because three feet make up a yard. And that's going to be cubed as well since we're dealing with cubic units here. So here, this one we're going to have 789 over 1. That's in cubic inches times... Everything in the parentheses has to be cubed. So the one has to be cubed. The feet has to be cubed over. The 12 in the denominator must be cubed. And the inches has to be cubed. Times that one is cubed. And the yards has to be cubed. All over three, that's cubed. And the yards has to be cubed. I mean, uh, feet has to be cubed. This is what we're converting from. Now notice these cubic feet divide out. The cubic inches divide out. You'll be left with yards here. So, here I'm going to do 789. 
And I know this is going to be one. That's going to be one. So I know that's 789 in the numerator. The denominator is going to be this. 12 cubed times 3 cubed. Oops. Okay, let me do this over. 789 divided by, then left parentheses, 12 cubed. Need my right parentheses to get out of it times 3 cubed. And that will be your final answer, point zero one six nine, And this will be in cubic yards. Okay. So that's what 789 cubic inches is equivalent to 0 .1, 0 0.0169 cubic yards. And then part C is 400 cubic centimeters is equal to how many cubic inches? Let's see, 400 cubic inches, I mean cubic centimeters. Now I'll put this over one times, let's see here, there are 2.5 plus uh, cubic centimeters in one inch. 2.54 centimeters in one inch. So I'm converting from centimeters. It has to go in the denominator and it's equivalent 2.54. And then the one inch goes in the numerator because I'm converting two inches. That has to go in the numerator. And also we're dealing with cubic uh, units. This whole thing has to be cubed. So now we got 400 cubic centimeters over one times. That one is going to be cubed, but I know that's going to be one. But anyway, the inches has to be cubed as well. And then the denominator, that 2.54 is going to be cubed. And centimeters will have to be cubed as well. Notice that these cubic centimeters divide out. We be left with cubic inches. So, if I do four hundred, that's going to be divided by, and then two point two point five four, and then I'm going to cube that. Oops. I get 2.424.409, rounded off to three decimal places. And this is going to be in cubic inches. So, 400 cubic centimeters would be equivalent to 24.409 cubic inches. Okay. And finally, part D, uh, 567 cubic meters is equal to how many cubic feet? Okay. Uh, I'm going to need to do this on another sheet of paper because I'm running out of space here on these slides here. So this is uh, 567 cubic meters. Cubic centimeter, yeah, cubic meters. And I'm going to put that over one. And I want to know how many cubic feet is that. In this case here, I know something about uh, meters and centimeters. There are 100 uh, centimeters in a meter. So, the meters have to go in the denominator and centimeters need to go on top because I need to to divide out those cubic meters. And by the way, this is going to be cubed anyway. So one meter equivalent to 100 centimeters. So the 100 goes on top and the one goes on the bottom with their respective units. I also know something else that 2.54 centimeters is equivalent to one inch. So this is what I'm going to do here. 
that centimeters needs to go in the new in the denominator and the inch needs to go on top. So that one inch is 2.54 centimeters. And that's also going to be cubed. And then finally, I know something else about inches and feet. 12 inches make up a feet, make up a foot. So the foot goes in the numerator and inches go in the denominator. One foot is 12 inches and that whole ratio will be cubed. All right, now let's simplify all of this if we can. 567 cubic meters. I'm going to put that over 1. That's going to be multiplied by, move this up. Everything is going to be cubed in the parentheses. So the 100 is going to be cubed. Centimeters has to be cubed over, well, 1 cubed is going to be 1. And then meters will be cubed. Then times, that 1 has to be cubed here and the inches will be cubed. The denominator will be cubed as well. So 2.54 will be cubed and uh, centimeters will be cubed times that one will be cubed. So with the foot, that's going to be cubed. This 12 will be cubed and the inches will be cubed. Now, when we simplify all of this, the cubic, mil cubic meters are gone. Cubic centimeters divide out, inches cubed divide out, you're left with feet. So now, let's get an approximate value for this. So that numerator, this one we're doing the numerator. I'm going to do 567 times 100. And that's going to be to the third power. That's going to be cubed. That's going to be this right here. And then that's going to be divided by what I have in the denominator. I got 2.54 and that's going to be cubed. And the 12 will be cubed. So 2.54 and that's cubed times 12. And that's also going to be cubed. And then hit enter. Now the three decimal places, this would be approximately 20,023.4416 if I run it to three decimal places. Now in this case here, whatever uh, decimal place they tell you to round off to, you do just that. Okay. So that's how we do problem number 22 on page 691, dealing with these uh, dimensional analysis when we're dealing with cubic uh, units. Okay. Now let's look at non-cubic units of volume. That's going to be the next thing we'll look at, non-cubic units of volume. Okay, And here they are. This summarizes non-cubic units of volume in the, US, in the U.S. customary system as well as their relationships here. Here we got teaspoon, which is TSP for the abbreviation. Tablespoon is TBSP. And the connection to that is it takes three teaspoons to make up one tablespoon. Then you got fluid ounce, which is FL, then OZ as the abbreviation. Now, one fluid ounce is going to be equivalent to two tablespoons. And then cup, which is a lowercase c, one cup is eight fluid ounces. Then pint, which is pt, it takes two cups to make up a pint. And then for quart, which is qt, it takes two pints to make up a quart. And then finally, for gallon, G-A-L is abbreviation. Four quarts will make up one gallon. Okay. And here's a concept map that relates the units of volume to powers of two. So for a gallon, which is up here at the top, 
that's two to the zero power. One half of a gallon, two to the first. Because it takes two half gallons to make up a gallon. Then quart there for those, that's two to the second. Because it takes four quarts to make up a gallon. And then for pint, there are eight pints that will make up a gallon. And that's because of the fact that two of these pints make up one single uh, quart. That's similar to two to the third. And then cups, two to the fourth. Sixteen cups make up a gallon. Okay, make an example 49. It says they're filling the blank. Three quarts is equal to how many cups? And then we'll look at 12 cups equaling to how many gallons here. So I'm going to be using dimensional analysis here. Let's start off with the three quarts. Well, we know that uh, it takes uh, two pints to make up a quart. So what we're converting from, which is quart that goes in the denominator, we're converting to pints that has to go in the numerator. So the two pints is in the numerator, one quart is in the denominator. But we want to get to cups. Well, there are two cups and a pint. So the pint, one pint goes in the denominator, and then two cups goes in the numerator. So here, the quarts and the pints divide out. You'll be left with three times two times two cups, equaling the 12 cups. So here, three quarts is equivalent to 12 cups. And then part B is this 12 cups is equal to how many gallons? So this is going to be on this next slide here that you see here. We have to go from cups to pints, then pints to quart, quarts to gallon. Two cups make up a pint. So we put the one pint in the numerator and the two cups in the denominator because we want to go from, pint, from cups here all the way to gallon. And then... Uh, two pints make up a quart. So the one quart has to go in the numerator and the two pints go in the denominator. But we also know that four quarts make up a gallon. So one gallon goes in the numerator and the four quarts go in the denominator. That way, the cups divide out, the pints divide out, and the quarts divide out. So we got 12 in the numerator and that's divided by two times two times four, which is 16. So 12 over 16 reduces to three-fourths of a gallon. So 12 cups is equivalent to three-fourths of a gallon. Okay. Now this next table summarizes nine cubic units of volume in the metric system and their relationships here. So here, this one deals with the uh, liters. So milliliter, or ML, or the one with the capital letter L, is the basic unit. And then liter, actually the liter is the basic unit. Liter, which can be capital L or lowercase l, one liter is equivalent to a thousand milliliters. And one kiloliter, which can be K with the capital L or K with the lowercase l, is connection one kilo liter is equal to 1,000 liters. Okay. All right, next we're going to look at the connection within, within and between metric and U.S. customary units of volume, how, how those two are connected to each other. Okay, in 11.14, this table here shows the relationship within and between metric and U.S. customary units of volume. So here, one liter is a thousand centimeters cubed. One liter is a thousand cubic centimeters. One liter is going to be equivalent to this number, 1.056688 quarts, if you were to round that out to the nearest million. And then one liter is equivalent to 33.8140227 fluid ounces, rounded to the nearest 10 million. And then one milliliter is a cubic centimeter, 
One quart is going to be 32 fluid ounces, and then one gallon is going to be 231 cubic inches. So there, there's that relationship within and between the metric and the U.S. customary units of volume. So let's look at this particular example here. A biosand water filter is a water purifier that removes bacteria using layers of sand and gravel through natural processes. A particular biosand filter contains 5,800 cubic inches of water. How many gallons of water does the filter contain? Okay, 5,000 cubic inches. And we want to know how many gallons of water. Well, there is an equivalent, uh, an equivalency from inches, cubic inches to gallons, which is this right here. One gallon is 231 cubic inches. So this is what we do. We're converting from inches to gallons. So the gallons has to go in the numerator and the 231 cubic inches goes in the denominator. And as you can see, the cubic inches divide out. You'll be left with 5,800 divided by 231. That will give you the answer in gallons. So here, you see that it's approximately 25.1 gallons. So that means this filter contains approximately 25.1 gallons. Okay. So that's the uh, customary, that's the uh, units of uh, volume and their equivalencies. So the next thing we're going to look at is the volume of a rectangular prism. The volume of a rectangular prism. Now this figure right here shows the standard deck of cards, which is a model of a rectangular prism with a volume V of the card paper given by V is equal to L, W, H cubic inches, as you can see in this case, right? Now here, you got the same deck of cards and it's slightly pushed to the side and represents a model of an oblique prism. So your prism usually can be slanted in this case, that's what we call oblique. The volume of card paper remains the same because the volume of the paper is the same. So the volume V of the card paper in the new stack is still going to be given by V is equal to LWH cubic inches. Both decks of the cards have the same height, as you can see. So now, we can state the formula for the volume of a right or an oblique rectangular prism. Here the volume V of a right or oblique rectangular prism with the linear dimensions of length being L units, width being W units, and height being H units is given by V is equal to L times W times H. And that will be in cubic units as well because volume is always going to be in cubic units. All right, take a look at this example, dealing with the volume of a rectangular prism. A landscaper is spreading soil to make a new rectangular lawn with the dimensions 20 feet by 45 feet. The soil will be three inches deep. The soil costs $15 per cubic yard. What is the total cost of the soil? Okay, so now the first thing we need to do here is convert those measurements into yards because it says $15 per cubic yard. Your dimensions are in feet and the soil is going to be inches. So we need to convert all of those to yards. So like 20 feet, three feet makes up a yard. So we have to say 20 divided by three and that would be yards. The same thing with the 45 feet. Three feet again makes up one yard. So it'd be 45 divided by three in yards. But for three inches, it takes, in this case, 36 inches to make up one yard. 
36 inches. So we do 3 divided by 36. That's 3 over 36. We reduce that to 1 12th. So 3 inches is 1 12th of a yard. And then we find the volume, which is length times width times height. So we do 20 divided by 3 times 45 over 3 times 1 12th. This will give you approximately 8.333 cubic yards. Now, if the soil is $15 per cubic yard, then we take 15 multiplied by, by 8.333 to get $125. So the total cost of that soil is going to be $125. All right, take a look at problem number 14 on page 690. What well, it says here, the dimensions of the edges in a right rectangular prism have the ratio of 3 to 5 to 12. The volume of the prism is 1,350 cubic centimeters. What is the length of the shortest side? Okay, so that ratio is 3 to 5 to 12. And I'm going to use some variable n. So that means 3n would be the length, that 5 would be 5n, representing the width, and then the 12, 12n represents the height. Now, of course, the volume of a rectangular prism is going to be length times width, times height. We're told the volume of that prism is uh, 1,350 cubic centimeters. So we do 1,350 here. That's equal to the length, that's going to be 3n, times the width, which is 5n, times the height, 12n. So here, if I multiply 3n times 5n times 12n, that will give me 180n. And that's equal to 1350. And then to solve for n, we divide both sides by 180. So that means n is equal to, now if I did this on the calculator, I came up with approximately 7.5. So here in this case here, 1350 divided by 180 is 7.5. And then I want to find the length of the shortest side. Well, here's the shortest side right here, 3n. So here, the length of that shortest side, shortest side would be 3 times n or 3 times 7.5 which equates to 22.5, and this is in centimeters. Because the volume is in cubic centimeters, that means the length has to be in centimeters. So that length there would be 22. The length of the shortest side is 22 and a half centimeters. Okay. All right, next we'll look at the volume of a prism. Now, the one we looked at was a rectangular prism. Let's say the base was something other than a rectangle, like this one right here. It shows a pentagon and a polyhedron. V unit squares cover the pentagon without any gaps or overlaps, so the area of the pentagon is V square units. And here... The polyhedron is composed of unit cubes, and every unit square or fraction of one in the pentagon has a corresponding face in a unit cube or a fraction of one in the polyhedron. This means there are B unit cubes in the polyhedron, so it has a volume of B cubic units. So on this next slide that you, that you see here, our immediate goal is to develop a formula for the volume of a right prism that has a base with an area of square 
of these square units and a height of six units as shown in this figure that you see here. So here, your base right there is a one, two, three, four, five, five sided figure. And then you got your height of six units. Okay. So as shown here, the volume of a layer or slice has a height of one unit as shown in figure 41B, which is this right here, is B cubic units. Then in this next figure, we see there are six slices in the right prism. So here you got six of these slices here in that right prism. Excuse me. So here there are B units in each layer and six layers. So, so there are B times six unit, unit cubes altogether. More generally, the formula for the volume of a right prism would be the V is equal to B times H cubic units. Okay. And these two figures, 40 and 41, will help justify why we multiply the area B of a base and the height of the prism to find the volume of that particular prism, as you can see. So here, this is the same formula for the volume of an oblique prism in the same way as we explained with the leading, with the leaning deck of cards. So the height of the prism is the distance between the parallel planes that contain the bases. So here's a right prism, and this one is oblique. But the formula is going to be the same for both of them. So this is what we have. The volume of a right or oblique prism that has a base with an area of B, B square units and a height of H units is given by this. B is equal to B times H cubic units. Now that capital B is going to be the base. The base could be a rectangle. It could be a triangle. It could be a uh, regular pentagon or a hexagon or whatever. So you have to know the formulas for the area of those particular uh, figures. Okay, next. A hexagonal aquarium provides multiple views and is suited for desktops or small places. A hexagonal aquarium with a height of 15 inches has, a, has sides with lengths of 14 inches and an apothem of 12.1 inches. One guide for determining the number of small community fish in an aquarium is one inch of fish per gallon of water. The average length of adult neon tetras is approximately two inches. According to this guideline, what is the maximum number of neon tetra fish this aquarium can support? And the hint is that one gallon is equal to 2.31 cubic inches, as we talked about earlier. Now here's the solution to that. Now they use the formula for the maximum volume of water in the aquarium. B is equal to B times H. The base in this case was a hexagonal aquarium. So that means the base was a hexagon. So we have to use this formula one half times P times A. The P is your perimeter of that particular hexagon. And if you don't know what hexagon is, it is a six-sided figure and it is a regular hexagon, meaning all the sides are equal. The perimeter is just taking the length, adding the length of all six sides. The length of each side is multiplied by six because there are six sides in the hexagon. The A is the apothem. Let me tell you what that is if you're not familiar. It is going to be the perpendicular distance from the center of that hexagon to the side of that hexagon. This right here is called the apothem. So 
So in this case here, if there are six sides in a hexagon, each side is uh, 14 inches. So we do for the P, six times 14. Times your A, which is the apothem, it told, told you was 12.1 inches in that problem. So that's 12.1, and then the height was uh, 15 inches. That's this right here. So if we multiply all of this, you'll get 7,623 cubic inches. Now, they want to know how many gallons. Well, we know that one gallon is 231 cubic inches. So the one gallon goes in the numerator. The two, 231 cubic inches go in the denominator. So those cubic inches divide out. You'll be left with approximately 33 gallons. Okay. So to answer that question, uh, the maximum number of uh, neon tetrafish that the aquarium can support would be 33 gallons. Okay. So the next slide, if I can get to it, here it is. Yeah, an adult tetra that is two inches long requires two gallons of water. Then that means if you do 33 gallons divided by two gallons per fish, that'd be approximately, that'd be equal to 16.5 fish. So under these guidelines, the aquarium can support 16 adult neon tetras. All right, take a look at problem number seven on page 690. The diagram represents a right pentagonal prism. The measurements unit is going to be feet. Now, this is problem 7D. Because in your textbook, they give you A, B, C, and D. But here I'm just doing D. I'll do A, B, and C later on on, on another video. Here I want to find the volume of the prism. Okay. Now, of course, we have to use the formula V is equal to the base times the height. Let's identify some things that we have. We do know what the height is. That's 18 feet. So I'm going to label the H being 18 feet. And... Let's take a look at the apothem. That's this right here. That's 10.3. So I know what that is. That's also in feet. And this side is 15. And this base is a pentagon, five sides. So if I want the perimeter, I have to do 5 times S. And the length of that side is 15, so it'll be 5 times 15, which would give me uh, 75. So the perimeter is 75 feet. And I can go ahead and find what the base is. That's, of course, the perimeter times the apothem. Well, that perimeter is 75 feet. So that's 75 times the apothem was 10.3. Oh, I forgot something. That should be one half P times A for the base. One half P times A. So this is one half. Your perimeter is 75. The apothem was 10.3. So if I take one half times 75 times 10.3, I will get uh, 386.25. And that's going to be in square feet. That's the area of the base. And now... I can use this formula, V is equal to B times H. 
So in this case here, that base was 386.25. The height is 18 feet. So 386.25 times 18 to, well, this will be 692, 6,952.5 cubic feet. That would be the volume of that particular pentagonal prism. Okay. All right, now next we're gonna look at the volume of a cylinder. The volume of a cylinder. Here, this figure shows a circle that has a radius of R units and a cylinder with a base that has a radius of R units and a height of one unit, as you can see. Okay, here's a circle. You know, it has a base, and then this one has a uh, height of one unit. And because pi r square unit squares, which is the area of the circle, covers the circle without any gaps or overlaps, the area of the circle is pi r square units. Every unit square of the circle or a fraction of one corresponds to the face of a in a unit cube or a fraction of one in the cylinder. This means there are pi r unit cubes in the cylinder, so the volume of the solid is pi r square cubic units. And our goal here is to develop a formula for the volume of a right cylinder that has a base with a radius of r units and a height of h equaling to 4 units, as shown in this figure here, as you can see. So now, here you got the volume of a layer or a slice. That's, that's pi r squared cubic units. So here, we're going to visualize the volume of a cylinder that has a base with radius r units and a height of 4 units. And then there are four slices as shown in this figure. Okay, so you see four slices here. That height is four. Oops. So here there are pi r squared cube units cubed in each layer and four layers. So there are pi r squared h times four unit cubes altogether. So more generally, the volume for the the formula for the volume of a right cylinder is going to be pi r squared times the height cubic units. Okay, so, and for an oblique cylinder, it's the same formula as well. So, the volume there is just going to be v is equal to pi r squared cubic units for a right or an oblique cylinder. Okay, because the base is a circle, so the area of the circle is going to be pi r squared. And then you have a height that you need to multiply to get that volume. And these are just a couple of illustrations here that you see that the height of, of a cylinder is going to be the distance between the parallel planes that contain the bases. So here, there's your height right there in this oblique cylinder. Okay. So now let's look at problem number 37D on page 692. And yeah, I had to write in those uh, units here because it wasn't clear when I did the slides or included this particular slide. The diagram shows a right cylinder. And here I want to find the volume of that right cylinder. Now this one has a radius of two feet. The height is three feet. So we just directly use that formula V is equal to pi times the radius squared times the height. And then we just go ahead and substitute the values into this equation. Uh, pi is this 
five nine times the radius, which is uh, two, and that's going to be squared times the height, which is three. Now, if you want to, you can multiply that two two squared. This will be two three point one four one five nine times. If I square the two, is going to be four times three. Now, this is just going to be an approximate value here. So, in this case, this will be 3.14159 times 4 times 3. And I'm going to round that off to one decimal place. So, this will be 37.7 cubic feet. Because volume is in cubic feet, so it'll be 37.7 cubic feet. So that's how you calculate the volume of a uh, right cylinder. Okay. Next, we'll look at a volume of an irregular, irregularly shaped object. The volume of an irregularly shaped object. And for that, we use what they call Archimedes' principle, which states that the volume of an object is equal to the volume of water displaced when you submerge the object in water. This allows us to find the volume of an irregularly shaped object with using a procedure called the displacement method. And this is illustrated in this figure, as you can see here. You got just the, the container with water in it. We know what we should know what the volume of that is. And then when you drop a uh, rock inside it, what happens is the water will rise. So the original volume of the water and the new volume of that water, if you subtract those two, that should tell you the approximate volume of the water. And that's going to equal to the volume of that rock using Archimedes' principle. Okay, so in this case, we do begin with a volume of water in a container, then we submerge the object in the water. Finally, we measure the volume of water displaced by the object. The volume of the water displaced equals the volume of the object. So here, the displacement method is straightforward to apply for right rectangular prisms or right cylinders because the volume of water displaced is easy to measure. Like in this example, a graduate cylinder is a right cylinder with marked scales, with a marked scale to make accurate liquid volume measurements. In this figure, a graduate cylinder initially contains 200 cubic centimeters of water. A rock is dropped in the cylinder. Find the volume of that rock. So here's where it started off at 200 cubic centimeters. And now we drop that rock inside that cylinder. Now the water has risen. So now we want to know what the volume of that rock is going to be. Here it is. The volume of water is 200 cubic centimeters. The combined volume of the rock in the volume became 260 cubic centimeters. Okay, so this might be hard to see, but it has risen to 200 cu 260 cubic centimeters. So if I do 260 minus 200, that would give me 60. So the rock displaces 60 cubic centimeters of water. That means that the volume will have to be 60 cubic centimeters for that rock. Okay, next we'll look at the volume of pyramids and cones. Volumes of pyramids and cones. Here our goal is to derive a formula from the, for the volume of a rectangular pyramid. Let's begin with a prism with the same rectangular base and height as the pyramid as shown in 
this particular figure. Here we're going to begin with a pyramid, like this one right here. And then next, we're going to create a prism with an open top with the same base and height as the pyramid. So here you see that clear rectangular box and, it's in, and the pyramid is on the inside. And then we're going to fill, let's say, three pyramids with ice. I mean, with rice. We just do that. And here, we got three pyramids of three different colors here. They're going to be filled with rice. So you're going to have to use your imagination on this one here. Now, if we empty the three pyramids into the prism, And you could follow along by with the pyramids and prism made from thin cardboard. We fill those three such pyramids with rice and empty them into that prism on the far right, as you can see. You're going to see that those three fill up that entire prism here, I should say. So it only takes one. So if the volume here is length times width times the height for this whole prism, then the volume of this pyramid would have to be one third of that entire volume of the prism. So that's where this formula comes in. The volume of a pyramid, that's going to be one third the base times the height in cubic units. Now, if you're dealing with a cone, now that idea of, fill, of having three pyramids fill up a, uh, a prism, the same thing holds true for a cone. It takes three cones to fill up an entire prism. So in this case here, the volume of the cone would be this, one-third pi r squared times the height, because the base of the cone is a circle. And the volume of us and the area of a circle will be pi r squared. So your base area, which is pi r squared, be multiplied by the height and then multiplied by one third. That's the volume of a cone. Okay. Take a look at this example here. A rectangular pentagonal pyramid has a height of 10 inches sides of the length of 12 centimeters and an apothem of 8.3 centimeters. Find the volume of the pyramid. Okay. So in this case here, the volume of a pyramid is one third the base times the height. We have a pentagonal base here, so we have to use one half the perimeter times the apothem. Now the perimeter, there are five sides, each side is 12. So here, bring down the one third times this one half times the perimeter, that's five times 12, times the apothem, which is 10, I mean 8.3, times the height, which is 10. Now if you multiply all this out, you'll get 830 cubic centimeters. So the volume of that pyramid would be 830 cubic centimeters. Okay, now here's problem 60 on page 890. The diagram represents a rectangular, a regular pen, pentagonal pyramid. The, measure, the measurement unit is feet. Find the volume of the pyramid. Okay, now let's look at what we already know. This one's a little bit different because notice this height is 22. This is something we're going to talk about a little bit later called the slant height. When we get to surface area, we know that part is 25.2. We know nothing about this part right here. That's something we need to know. That's the apothem. So if I take that part and pull that out, this is what we're going to have, a right triangle. I know this is 22. 
And this right here represents 25.2. The apothem is right there. Now, if you notice that this is a right triangle, and in a right triangle, we can use something called the Pythagorean theorem. If you don't know what the Pythagorean theorem is, is this a square plus b square equals c square. I'm going to use that to come up with, find out what a is. So I'm going to leave a out, that's a square, plus this length would be b, that's 22 square equals the hypotenuse. Your hypotenuse is always going to be C, the longest side, 25.2. 25.2, and that's squared. A squared is what I'm trying to find. If I square the 22, that's going to be 22 times 22, or 484, equals the square of 25.2. That's a 600. 35.04. So now to get a squared by itself, I need to subtract 464, 484 on both sides. Let me minus 484 minus 484. This will be a squared. And that's equal to 151.04. And to find out what A is, you have to take the square root of 151.04. And if you do this on the calculator, this is what I came up with approximately, and I can show you that here as well. So second x squared for the square root of 151.04. I came up with approximately 12.29. So that's 12.29 for A. And I can find out what uh, the perimeter is as well. I'm going to need that. That's going to be 5 times S. In this case here, this side is 18. It's a pentagon, there are five sides, so this will be 5 times 18, which will equal 90. So the perimeter there is 90. And then I can find out what the base is of that uh, pen pentagon. That's 1 half P times A. So I got 1 half the perimeter, which is 90, times the A, which is 12.29. This will be approximately 553.042. That's going to be the base of this particular pentagon. And I know what the height is. That height is 22. So let me write somewhere the height is 22. Because that's this height right here. And now I can find out what the volume is going to be. The volume is, of course, base times height. So that base was uh, 553.042 times the height of 22. Now, if I multiply, well, I forgot something. One third. So I need one third here. I'm always forgetting that. It is a pyramid, so it's got to be one third the base times height. So I got to do one third times 553.042 times 22. This will be approximately, if you round this off to the nearest whole number, 4,056 cubic feet. Okay. So that's going to be the volume of that particular pyramid. Okay. Okay. Now this next example, problem number 39D, deals with the uh, cone. 
So here we're going to find the volume of the comb and round to the nearest tenth for our final answer. Okay, this is what we have. We do have a right circular cone. I know what this radius is. This side right here is the slant, at slant height. We'll talk about that in the next video. That's 10 feet. I know nothing about the height. So if I take that part out, this would be in the form of a right triangle, as you can see. So this is 6 and this is 10, but I don't know what this is, that H. I need to know what that is. Here I can use the Pythagorean theorem like I did in the last example. So here, this will, this will be h squared plus this side is 6 and that's squared. That's going to be equal to your hypotenuse, the longest side. That's 10 and that's going to be squared. So here, this will be h squared plus 6 squared or 6 times 6 is 36 equals 10 squared or 10 times 10. That's 100. And now I need to get h squared by itself. So I need to subtract 36 on both sides. So that means h squared is equal to 100 minus 36, that's 64. And then if I know what h is, I need to take the square root on both sides. So the, the square root of 64, which is 8. So this h right here represents the 8. Okay. And that's eight feet, by the way. So now I can find the volume of that uh, cone. The volume of the cone is one third pi r squared times the height. So here we got v is equal to one third uh, pi. 3.14159 times the radius, that's 6. That's going to be squared times the height, which is 8. So here, pretty much I can type all this in the calculator here. Let's see, one third would be 1 divided by 3 times... I'm going to type in 3.14159 times 6, and that's going to be squared, times 8. Let's say the one decimal place, this will be 301.6. 301.6. So this is approximately 301. 0.6 cubic feet. So that represents the volume of that particular uh, cone. Okay. All right. So this is only going to be part one of this video for section uh, 11.4. There will be a part two to the uh, to this section, and it's going to be dealing with solely with surface area. So we're going to be dealing with formulas that deal with surface areas of uh, three-dimensional figures like the uh, prism, the cone, uh, the cylinder, and the pyramid, and other things as well. So do be on the lookout for that particular video here. So there's part two coming up.